Welcome back to Dark Nights. We left off talking to Kaichi. Let's drag him out, because that's what gives us the ding noise. I glance at him and walk in, ignoring his words. Grabbing his arm, I pull him up and drag him out with me forcefully. Fair enough. Hey, where are we going? We can't make a scene in front of these people. Should get guts to show up at school after what happened last week. I'm an honor student, unlike those slackers I always attend. Don't think I'll easily forgive you for trying to hurt my friend twice. I pin him against a wall and look down at him with a devilish expression. What shall I do with naughty boys? Aware that he's defenseless, he can only force an innocent smile. Beating up a student won't improve your reputation. I've knocked out a few years before. What do I have to lose anyway? Uh, we're at school. I'm aware of that, but I saw your teacher going for his lunch break. We won't be back for a while. What might be better? I can report you to the police. There were more witnesses that day. Um, I have a piece of information that might be interesting to you. Shall we make a truce? His eyes look directly at me. I can tell it's not a lie. <clears throat> he sighs in relief after I loosen my grip. Crossing my arms, I wait for what he has to say. Alright. You know people keep going missing the past days? I was at your place on Friday and everything that happened that night was not my doing. I feel like I'm missing something. As if I'm gonna listen to you. That forest demon was there. It would have been troublesome if he had saw me. I believe he's referring to Zekin. I stare him for a while. He does not break into sweat. He must be telling the truth. Kaichi lowers his voice. Someone or something is taking people's souls, and the bodies left behind become living corpses. In other words, they turn into zombies. How is that even possible? There must be a way to put the soul back, right? Don't look at me, I'm not a necromancer. Even if the soul's returned when the heart is in no condition to beat again, they'll remain dead. How are we supposed to catch such a twisted person? By the way, how many souls have you collected, and how many do you have to left to collect? I only took two souls. Nice enough to get the souls of you and your friend. Many were taken and turned into evil spirits. Once those souls are corrupted, it becomes harder for me to take them. Can't you change them back? I only have one job, which is collecting. I don't have the powers for anything else. That means there's a third party involved, hmm? Probably that lady. An angel. Because it's something you should have. It goes against order. Demons are attracted to you. Only a Shinigami can purify your soul so you can live normally in your next life. Most of the cursed ones would willingly give up their current life because they couldn't tolerate demons that bother them. There's some advantages of this curse, like the inability of getting possessed. But I can't think any why anyone would want to stay cursed. I think it's more of a blessing rather than a curse. Not being tainted. So far, you're the only supernatural being that's attracted to me. Kachi rolls his eyes and lets out a sigh. Anyway, just know there are more deaths than I have taken lives. It really wasn't your doing? That's what I've been saying the whole time. Why would I take an extra hundred souls for no reason? Even so, you're still guilty. I won't let you get a kui in me. As if I'm gonna listen to you. With a disapproving expression, I pinch his cheeks. Struggling in my grip, he tries to escape, but his efforts are useless. I will spill your identity if you don't stop the kidnapping. Like anyone would believe you. You never know what people believe. I finally let him go and glare at him once again. He rubs his cheeks and turns away. You will regret this. Sure, sure, Kaichi. But not during the daytime. Today we can hear exam results back. There's nothing worried about. I'll, I know I'll pass like I always do. Yoko, how much did you score? A decent 94%. I knew studying would help. <coughs> I'm afraid a 94 is an A. Good job. 
Now, is it math or history? 72% isn't bad, though. You must have cheated to score that high. Oh, come on, Leo. She don't be a sore loser. I studied hard for this. Next time, better. Classes by quickly and it occurs to me that it's almost the holidays. I'm not really looking forward to them. My friends are going on a trip so I won't be able to see them as often. I do my best to pay attention during math, but my focus shifts to two classmates whispering to each other. I start exorcist training this week. It's going to be so awesome. I'm going to expel evil spirits and maybe even the forest demon. After we drive them all away, the disappearances will finally stop and we can live in peace. Sounds like a waste of time. I'm serious, the demon's the cause of all this chaos. You wish it was. That's too unrealistic for students to do. Exorcisms aren't in my league anyway. Even if you're not going to join as a trainee, you could come watch. You'll experience something awesome. Normally people won't get this chance. You're lucky we're friends. Fine, I have nothing on my schedule anyway. I have to tell them about what they're planning. A few days later. I haven't seen Kachi since that day. I expected him to come after me again, but it seems like he's behaving himself after my warning. Okay, he's also been looking fine and attending class regularly. Zaken's been on my mind for the past few days. I keep worrying if he was discovered or something happened to him. I try to visit the forest, but there's too many investigators on standby, making it impossible to find an opening to slip through. After class, I head to the library to borrow a few books with Akui and Laoji. While I'm here, I decide to research more about the demon. It's not surprising the library has many books about it. I take every book related to temples. Night at the Temple, a comedy horror series about a regular priest whose life changes forever after he accidentally finds a stone deity statue walking around when the moon rises. Uh, that's a movie reference. Night at the Museum or something. Starting, starting Nicolas Cage. Hey, Miyoko. Did I tell you they've caught one of the murderers? Really? The traces led us to an abandoned mansion where we found him dead. Ah, oh, Roya. We initially assumed it was a suicide, but there were signs of struggle, so he was probably killed. Chain found him. That's why he was hurt. Ooh. We've yet to identify him, but he's our age. A student responsible for all the cruel killings? Was there anything odd about him? What do you mean? Well, I was kidnapped. Maybe it's the same person. Have your memories returned, Akuya? No, I'm sure the real culprit is still out there somewhere. I think Miyaku's right. The killer we found was acting individually. It's obvious when you look at the killing methods. What the cops do if the culprit, I don't know, happens to be a supernatural? I don't know, it's never happened. Besides, are there even supernaturals in the village? Yes. Yes. Are you too so sure? Especially you, Miyoko. Tell me what the skeptic has experienced. What I'm about to tell you may sound ridiculous, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. I was kidnapped by a Shinigami and a demon came to my rescue. He also said to me multiple times when I was on the verge of death. There are many rumors going on about him, but barely any of them are true. Him? Are you sure he was a demon? The real forest demon was sealed away. He's a relative of hers. I saw it with my own eyes when he transformed into one. But a lot of blame is being put on him even though he has nothing to do with it. Are you referring to the crimson haired man who saved me? Yes, he is the current forest demon. I knew there was something mysterious about him. Never thought he was hiding this. Rumors are one thing, but the people that keep him going are something else. You know, if I was in their situation, I'd be trying to hunt him down. All of them. I'd probably be like Shane. Good old Shane. Sucks he got killed. Alright, I'll give you guys benefit of the doubt. I mean... Even Akuya trusts this demon when she was so scared of him in the beginning. In a way, it seems the remaining murderer is hiding behind the forest demon rumors and feeding off the attention. The fact of the matter is the murderers are still ongoing, and we haven't identified all the perpetrators yet. 
I'm with- I'm in on- I'm in with you on this. I'm embarrassed to say the cops haven't been able to make much progress. At some point, they even questioned if there was a mole in the team slowing down the investigation, and they had to keep track of each investigator. It was not the case, obviously. But Leo Sheet, the team did make progress. If it weren't for the private guards, I think more victims would fall. I understand your frustration, but please don't blame yourself. Okiyo swings an arm on Leoji's shoulder and gives him a reassuring smile. Leoji nods in response and rubs his neck. I know he's been working very hard to solve the cases as well, but I'm so much better at this. You should at least have a few leads after all the investigating you've been doing. Well, I asked Okiyo to help with the reporting suspicious people. Mm-hmm. I think you should tell Miyoko since you experienced it firsthand. I saw someone walking on a wall like he just defied gravity and walked straight, straight up it like it was nothing. Are you sure you didn't just dream it? It was early evening and I was on my way home when I saw it. I think the person was chasing someone. Your story makes the situation even more creepy. Walking on walls can definitely help hide your tracks. Even so, we haven't found any clues on the walls at the crime scenes, so it probably isn't related. I'll keep it in mind though for now. By the way, are you still looking into new residents? We only have a few left to check up on, but they are still on the list of suspects. Good. If it happens to be none of them, that is one less possibility. We continue bouncing theories until the sky grows dark. I want to do more research, so I stay a bit longer while Akui and Leoji head home. Curious, I brushed through it. One of the oldest records mentioned a female voice. It would give people advice on how to solve their problems using dark energy. It was not reported when these people ended up doing. My grandmother was such a pain. A sudden voice startles me and I drop the documents, papers scatter on the floor. I turn to see Zaken behind a bookshelf. He looks in my direction with his arms crossed. His presence surprises me. The library is the last place I'd expect to encounter him. Doing research about the demon? I can simply tell you about her. Sup? Once he hands the bow to me, we both take a seat at a nearby table with him opposite me. How do you get into the... Now this is probably a public library. Zaken is focused on me. He leans his arm. He leans on his arm and seems to be waiting for me to say something. Uh, hi Zaken. I didn't know you're familiar with this place. It's my first time here. I heard that people collect and share information in a place called a library. I was curious about what humans are interested in, only to find a bunch of lies. Well, not everything is a true account of history. We have many fictional stories here. I know that much. What I'm talking about is the historical section. How can you be sure of its authenticity? There's nothing else we can rely on. It's not like we were at the events. So stupid that you believe everything. What should I believe then? I cross my arms, feeling insecure that he's looking down on me. Silence falls between us. After a moment, he turns to me. His expression softens as he starts speaking. The forest had been guarded by my bloodline for generations. I keep the memories of my ancestors. It's like a passing ritual. Obviously, I don't remember everything. And what is forgotten can't be passed on. The previous successor, my grandmother, is the reason things went wrong. But I don't blame her. She went mad because she was driven into a corner, and that caused rumors to form and spread. What about your parents? Did guarding skip a generation? Our father was supposed to be her successor, but he accidentally got caught up in some sort of summoning ritual. The humans feared his appearance and killed him right after. My mother was there too, but she was unable to help my father. She received all the blame after my grandmother found out what happened to her son. This is how I lost both my parents. Wait, did your grandmother kill her own daughter-in-law? Are you feeling sorry for me? Warning over their deaths won't bring them back. I can only treasure the memories I had with them. The best I can do is to remember. 
I rest my arms on the table and gaze down. I will never forgive my grandmother for causing another loss, but she was all I had. Little Zaken stares at the back of the woman in bloody clothes, the one he addresses as his grandmother. The grassy field is drenched in dark liquid. There's a body laying at my grandmother's feet. Ah, it's you, Zaken. Huh? She's gone to sleep. Let her rest for a while. Why is she sleeping out in the open? Don't worry about it, Zay. It's best to leave her alone for a while. I said leave now. Then when she's up to something, Zaykin turns around and just then, the woman wraps her arms around him. Your mother betrayed my son. I had to do this. Forgive me for what I've done. Zay, you're still so young. I'm sorry. So sorry. The only child I ever had was taken away from me. I can't. You're the only relative I have left. I'll take care of you and raise you like my own son. I wanted to pass the duty as forest garden to someone in my bloodline, but... But... Little Zaken keeps himself still. Even when it started bleeding. Seeing his grandmother like this, he places his hand on top of hers. It'll be alright, Grandma. I'm stunned after Zaken shares the memory. I can barely comprehend how he must have felt during that moment. Zaken. It happened a long time ago. At the time, I didn't understand what was going on, but I have a different opinion now. Is that how your grandmother changed her view of humans? Not really. Why else would she kill my mother first instead of going straight for the villagers? She wasn't pleased by the incident, of course, but she left him alone for the most part. However, other demons started to appear in the village. They killed and ate a ton of spirits living in the forest. Grandmother couldn't deal with them all by herself, so she asked the villagers for help. They helped, but then turned against her after a while. Meanwhile, other demons influenced the villagers. She wasn't the only one using this card. She had to deal with both demons and the villagers, so being alone, she sought for power. In the end, she was sealed away and died while still holding on to her beliefs. I'm speechless after listening to a story, the puzzle slowly coming together in my head. However, since this is Zaken's retelling of events, some pieces are missing. Hey, Zaken. Thank you for telling me this. It's the past. No one is bothered with it anymore. But it left marks that continue to this day. Your grandmother's mistake of trusting the wrong people may have influenced you, but you chose your own path. I'm not in the place to say considering how people treated you, but I hope you will have a see a different light. Zaken shift his gaze to me with his last words. He seems to be thinking, but finally sw snorts and stays in silence. <clears throat> Shortly later, the library closes. Zaken walks me home. It appears he's going in the same direction, too. I give him a grateful smile before parting ways. A few days pass by. I go to class as usual, but I cannot get sick and story out of my head. On my way back from the canteen, I hear a conversation between my teacher and a woman. How are your students? They've been doing well. I warned them like you told me to. Such events never happened in the village before. How dangerous is this person? I can't reveal too much about our investigations, as it may cause misinformation to spread. There may not be only one person involved. This must sound ridiculous, but we're t thinking of taking those rumors about the forest demon into consideration. We believe the killer is hiding behind the demon's name, so understanding the rumors might give us clues to their patterns. If you have anything to contribute, we'd gladly hear it. I'd be glad to help. I recall the contents of my textbook a while ago. The dark truth is never mentioned in it. My curiosity peaked once again. Make a quick stop at the library to borrow some books about the subject and head straight home. Sagan told me about his grandmother, but very little about everything else. Even though the stories are not about him specifically, I want to know what rumors he has been dealing with. Many locals believe it's the result of the curse brought about the village. It's off for priests to drive the demon away. Their efforts were futile and all hopes seemed to be lost. But one day, several blessed individuals appeared. They managed to seal the demon away forever. 
It makes sense that blessed people are able to fight against him. Are blessings passed down through the generations? That'd mean my ancestor sealed Zakin's grandmother away. In the legend, the demon cursed a few villagers. That part is true. The curse is passed from generation to generation, and now I'm collecting the currently cursed souls before the cycle can continue. However, not everyone was at ease. Some believed it was not on the only demon that lived in the forests. Others thought the curse still lingered. No one has seen anything in the forest of late. Biologists and priests have proven the forest is safe, but fear still lies in people's hearts. Right now, their fear is directed towards Zaken, even though he has nothing to do with his grandmother's past. Is it really hopeless to convince the villagers that the current forest demon is not dangerous? My guess might be off, but it sounds like it came from the roof. Hmm. I ignore it, but then I hear the same thing again. What could be making such a noise at this racket? The marshmallow puppets randomly appear and float towards Zaken. They seem to have missed him. How long have... Don't mind me, just go ahead and sleep. I can't now, knowing you're on my roof. There are too many investigators in the forest. I can't rest easy with them crowding around the temple. This is the only place I can think of. Your neighbor's pretty quiet too. I'm only gonna stay for a short while. You could have asked me and I would let you in. I follow his gaze and take in a breath. The sky looks beautiful at sunset. As if he hears my thoughts, he suddenly stands up and comes over to me. He reaches out his hand and helps me climb up. He guides me to where he was before and we sit down next to each other. They look very stoic in this artwork. Thank you. We watch the sky quietly. His quick familiar movements tells me it's not the first time he sat here. It never occurred to me to look up at the roof every time I get home. I remember Kaichi saying about not taking Yakuya because someone was here and realized why he hadn't returned it. It must be because of Zaken. He may not admit it, but I'm thankful he's guarding me. Sir, he really kept his word when he said he'd visit. You don't like the village, yet you still came here. I know. Though it's been a while since I wandered around, it feels different from the last time I stayed. Last time, there were priests in every corner of the village. There are less now, but residents are still protected by demon warning spells. I guess things haven't changed at all. Did you really give up on clearing your name? I thought I was being annoying saying the same things again, but he turns to me and speaks in a soft voice. If only it were that simple. I did try to convince them before. I even spent some time around the village in disguise. In the beginning, I was curious about what stories were going around, but at some point I realized I was better off not knowing. I even tried fighting the rumors off with other rumors, but nothing works. Just, not everyone is accepting like you, Miyoko. These words strike a chord in my chest. I don't know how to reply to them. In some way, it feels sad. How many generations will it take for things to change? I wish not to be involved, but it's not something I can decide. Even if I try, it always backfires on me. Take the man with the guns. We never met before, but he knew what I was instantly. Shane might not be the best person to represent the rest of the village. Zaken must have been left with a bad impression after that incident. You shouldn't give up yet. There are villagers that aren't bothered with your presence. Also, my friend is thankful for what you've done. She won't forget that. I can handle this. You should worry more about the kidnappers in the village. Perhaps you should stay with the police for a while. Even corrupted spirits stay away from a place where many people stay guarded. Are he planning to stay at Leoji's place? It doesn't take long before night falls. The colorful sky gets replaced by dark hues and shining stars. It's been a while since I went stargazing. It is such a simple yet breathtaking experience. I've been so occupied with myself and other people recently, I forgot to appreciate the finer things in life. Sitting here with Zaken feels so comfortable that I start to feel sleepy. 
You should go to sleep. No thanks, it's still early. He closes his eyes in with a small smile on his face. I note that he's been smiling a lot more often lately. You've been going to many places these past few days. You seem tired. Go to sleep, you need the rest. I won't go anywhere. Harvey helps me get down and go back to my room. One week later. For a week since then, I keep an eye on the news. The number of missing reports in the town have increased. And since investigators have not found anything suspicious in the forest, they decided to focus on the disappearances instead. In the end, they did not find the buried bodies. Whether these events are separate or linked, I've yet to find out. At the very least, I know that Zaken and Kaichi are not the ones behind the events. With the forest now clear, Zaken went back a few days ago. So far though, I haven't seen Kaichi for a while. He must be really bad at tracking people. I should take advantage of that. Now with investigators gone, I can finally move freely in the forest without getting caught. Didn't I tell you to stop coming here? I came to warn you about something. I forgot to tell you last time. These humans are so foolish. They should look at their own problems within the village first. This is all bothersome. Their rituals respect all spirits, pure and corrupted. I question their knowledge of our species. I hope it won't affect you. It won't do much to me, but it'll weaken my spells. So, what are you gonna do? I will stay here where most of the villagers, or spirits are, and keep any villager at bay. Even with the assurance I can't stop worrying. It's gotten late, and I need to return to Leoji's place before the streets get dangerous. Okay. I hear a scream from an alley nearby. Something must have happened. Is it another zombie? Or is it one of those two? I have the choice to either escape or help, but I choose the latter. Hurriedly, I run in the direction of the sound. There's a girl in a familiar uniform being cornered by a woman. From the girl's defensive stance, it shows they are not acquainted. I approach the one from her blinds, but I launch a powerful kick into her back. Leave her alone. She whips her head around to stare at me. Unaffected by my kick, she moves swiftly, swinging her fist at me. The woman hits her head on the ground, losing consciousness. Sorry, it must have been too rough. What happened? Are you okay? You arrived just in time. The stranger suddenly tried to attack me. Are you an elite student? Ah, I have seen you with Kaichi the other day. He must be good friends. He never talks to me. I just borrowed this uniform before my own is ready. I see. Anyway, you should be careful when walking at night next time. Thank you for helping. How'd you do that? By the way, since you've been here for a week, what do you think of the environment? This place is still in me, so I haven't got used to the school system yet. Besides, most of my classmates aren't present. It feels kind of lonely. I forgot to mention my name is Rasumi. I'm Miyoko. You should interact with people from other classes. They're nice. Kind of like you. I can't thank you enough for helping me back there. No problem. It's only natural to help others, right? See you at school. I do not like her. I mean, I really don't, considering I know the past of Karado. Granted, you wouldn't know that if you haven't done that route. The stories overlap. And yet they don't, at the same time. Working with the cops must be tough on top of the things he does for his clubs and as class president. I keep telling him, but he refuses to take a break. This is his punishment for not listening to me. And it's his fault for taking on so many things at once. It must be frustrating that people keep going missing and he can't make it stop. Why don't you join the force? I thought you were interested in that stuff. Eh. You're super smart. They might make more progress with you as a recruit. I'll think about it. I doubt they'll take my theories about demons, zombies, and shinigami seriously. Even my classmate who works as a shrine priest is an odd cookie. Oh well. During lunch break, I catch Rasumi standing at the door. Hi. Would it be okay if I join you? No problem. In fact, I'm glad you're approaching other students. Maybe Karada will show up and try to save me from her since he's still alive. 
He's in his big bunny wolf dog, whatever form that curse is. Honestly, I like this village better. It's less noisy and people at school are way friendlier than at my previous one. Yeah, no kidding. What requirement did you meet for entering the elite class? I don't know. Is this group something special? She seems to be clueless about the school system. Your class looks fun. Mine is empty half the time. Oh, didn't Gachi come today? I don't think so, but I wanted to have lunch with him since he's the only other classmate I know, but I can't find him anywhere. He doesn't like you. He really, really doesn't like you since you stabbed him. Just kidding, but you know, they're nicer people to be friends with. After class scenes, I'm about to go home when a teacher stops me. Miyoko, I've been looking for you. Aren't you the elite class teacher? This may be an odd request, but... Can you pass on these papers onto Kaichi Medoshima? He was absent today, and he said he would do his school work at home. You guys are close, right? It's not like we really get along. Last time we were together, I was picking a fight with him. I noticed the teacher hands the papers to me. Kaichi's address is written on the front. Thank you very much. Encountering him in his adult form would be troublesome. I walk to the street, listing the address, and count off the door numbers while, for a while until I stand before a huge villa. I wait patiently, and shortly after, hear someone approaching the door. I came to... I do know where I live. I got your dress from the teacher. And wait here. What are you doing? Quick, before someone sees us. This is supposed to be a hiding place. Even though your address is in the school system? Don't question me, it's a long story. Gachi closes the door and guides me into the living room. And we'll leave off here. I like the music. Hmm. So Kaiji is an evil... in the slightest bit. Roya... yeah, he's just a bad guy. Fair enough, fair enough. We're getting involved with an angel, a Shinigami, a demon. Wow! Set. Even though these aren't really, uh, realistic for how they would act. Hey, good story. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. As always, goodbye.